Um, so I um, am here to talk to you about the different research, about the thing that just went away. Um, sorry. There you go. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, navigating the various different resources that Civi CRM has to offer once you have Civi CRM. Um, so who am I and why the hell am I talking to you guys about this? Well, my name is Jessica Kirstner. Um, you can find me on Twitter if you're into Twitter at JKMiami89. Um, I'm the development manager for an organization called the Secular Student Alliance. Um, we're a medium-sized nonprofit organization um, that empowers secular high school and college students to build communities on their campuses. If you want to talk about that, you can find me later. Um, and I have been using Civi CRM uh, with, secular, with the Secular Student Alliance um, for about two and a half years in really a user and admin type role. Um, when I first got hired at the SSA, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Um, this was pretty much my face all of the time. I barely even knew what a database was. I had just graduated from college with a degree in biology. Um, I had done a little bit of fundraising, and I was now a development associate for a national nonprofit. It was all really, really intimidated. But you can just take a deep breath, because everything will be OK. Um, there's almost nothing you can do that is going to completely ruin anything. And Civi CRM has the huge advantage of having an absolutely fantastic community for support to go along with some really, really fantastic resources that will help you make sure that you don't ruin everything or don't even get onto the path of ruining things so you or somebody else has to undo them later um, because that is a fun process. So um, who is Civi CRM? Uh, we all know what it is. It's a content resource management or not content, contact, constituent. constituent. I always forget what that first word letter is. Um, oh, by the way, I would love for this to be an interactive process. I know that we probably have people in here who, like I was two and a half years ago, are really, really new to Civi CRM um, and just kind of to technology and language like that in general. If you have any questions about what I mean when I say something like core Civi CRM functions or um, wiki or anything else, please, please interrupt me and ask and we can talk through them and figure it out. Um, because I really wish I had been a little bit more bold and upfront about doing that at the beginning. Um, it's helpful, especially when you have such a wonderful community like Civi does. Um, so Civi is made up of the core team, uh, like you all got talked, at, uh, talked to by Dave at a little bit earlier. Um, Dave is absolutely wonderful and is a part of that. And they do all the legwork to make Civi CRM go. Um, they rule and are really, really nice and really awesome and friendly and open and will answer your questions and make you feel like much less of an outsider who doesn't belong. Um, it's also all of the contributors, the people in the organizations that do the work coding for releases, that make sure the documentation is there, that make sure that Civi CRM has everything it needs to function. And it's the community, um, all of us, all of the people who host and develop and support and use Civi CRM. And you can find them everywhere at meetups, trainings, on the forums, right here, in person, in MeetSpace. It's rather fantastic. Um, so we're going to talk about um, all things that aren't on this list too, but kind of six big things that we're going to talk about um, at this talk are the book, the wiki, the IRC, um, JIRA, events, and the forums. Um, I saved the forums for last because they're one of my favorite resources and favorite tools that Civi CRM has to offer, um, so I like to talk about them last because I like them. <laughs> um, so we'll start off with the book. Um, if you haven't gone and looked at it, it is the user and admin guide. It has the basics on what you need to know to get started using Civi CRM and to use the core functionality of Civi. Um, it covers the initial setup, interface explanation, workflows you might run into, how do you map your data and get your data into Civi in a way that's not going to give you a giant headache later, um, what are the different functionalities that it has, um, and um, it covers a lot of the different resources that we're also going to be talking about here. Um, it's a really, really useful tool for getting started for as a first place to look to if you've never used one of the core Civi CRM functionalities. Like at my organization, we don't use Civi for events right now. Um, we have the whole Civi events part just turned off um, because it's not a functionality that we're currently taking advantage of. Um, but it's something we're looking at exploring in the future. So when we turn on Civi events, one of the first things that we'll do is go to the book so we can do things right the first time. And so we can make sure that we're listening to what other people have found that works well and using it as it's intended instead of trying to tape things together um, and making it work. 
Um, and like I said, it's a great place to start learning um, and as a first place. Um, it covers all the different CV CIVI CRM components, um, the, like I said, events, contributions, memberships, walks through of the basics of using these functions, and it even covers, you know, how do you navigate the CIVI CRM menu? Because I know for me that was one of the most intimidating things when I was starting. Um, when I'm talking to people about CIVI, a lot of the times I say that it has sort of a high learning curve. Um, once you understand it, you understand it, and it seems like, oh, this is really simple and easy to navigate. But there is definitely a challenge to figuring out, well, is this thing going to live under contributions and then on the contribution pages, or do I need to go over to the um, administrative settings to get to this particular functionality? Um, and it covers that sort of things, like how do you interact with the um, interfaces. Um, the next resource that we'll be talking about is the wiki. Um, if you are, I do have all the URLs up in the upper right. Um, Civi is actually really great at having standardized URLs. Um, you'll notice a pattern as we go through these different um, services that they offer. That's book.civicrm.org, wiki.civicrm.org. So that's really nice. Um, the wiki kind of supplements the books and has a lot more documentation and more in-depth on the different things that you can do with Civi CRM. Um, if you're looking at how to set up mail servers, um, that's probably going to be a little bit more in-depth in the wiki than it will be on the book. Um, uh, so that's where all of the documentation lives. There's an admin section um, that's sorted by function. Um, some of the sections, like mail setup, are a little bit more technical um, and make me, when I read them, go, huh? Um, and sometimes it can be challenging and really take some studying, or it's just something that's totally outside of my capability to do, and um, that's when I go talk to my support team and get help. <laughs> um, it, uh, like I said, has the how-to documentation, and it is community written. Um, if you're looking for a way to give back and you know how to use a particular part of Civi really well, the wiki is a great place that you can get involved and help work on that documentation um, because documentation really sort of serves as the institutional memory of a thing, of a product, of a nonprofit, of um, an organization, of anything like that. And without the wiki and without this documentation, all of these services are going to be a little bit harder to find. Um, so that's the basic interface. For um, the documentation, you can see they have the user admin guide, um, installation upgrade, how do you administer. Um, they have stuff in there for developers, um, which I didn't really talk about because um, I figure it's a little bit outside of the scope of what most people at this conference, including myself, um, are doing most of the time. So. Um, some parts are incomplete when you're looking through the wiki. You might find yourself clicking and find a page that you're really interested in looking at and find that there isn't anything there. Um, so we're, it's again, it's a work in progress. It's people are still looking to fill in these knowledge gaps and make sure that everything is covered so that those questions can be answered for everyone who needs them. And if you are looking through the wiki and you're like, oh, I wonder how I do this this way. I wonder how they say that you should do this particular functionality. Um, and there's nothing there. That's an opportunity for you if you're interested to step up and take part in the community. Anyone have any questions at all so far? Um, next up is IRC, um, and for the IRC, I'm going to ask you all some questions because that's a, it's a chat room for help. Um, I have not really used it very much. Um, I've sat and looked and watched a little bit um, and, and seen what goes on. Um, I know that you can ask questions and get answers there, um, but I don't know if anybody else in the room has more that they would like to add or other uses that they found for IRC. Um, things that they find useful about it. Um, when I have questions, usually the first place that I go is the forum, not there. Um, but that's what the login sort of hookup looks like. Um, you go in and there's a chat room and there's usually a lot of people hanging out in there. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to animate this slide. Cool. Um, so um, there's also the demo sites, which are really crucial and sometimes really fun thing to go in and play with. Um, it lets you go in and test and figure out what Civi CRM um, can do. Um, I know I've used it to look at 4.5 and be excited about some of the new features that I want to play with and see what's coming up um, so I can think ahead and strategize on how my organization can keep using with that. 
Um, when you, one of the great things about the demo site is um, when you were talking about bug reporting in a little bit, um, it's where you can go to see if your bugs are on your install or if they're an actual Civi CRM bug, um, if there's something that needs to be, an infi be fixed on the um, install itself. Um, if you're still considering Civi CRM, um, it's a great place to get a feel for the features and how it works. They have in, uh, different versions of the demo site for all of the different installs of Civi CRM. You can see what it looks like on Drupal, what it looks like on Joomla, what it looks like on WordPress. And that in particular was really, really helpful for me. Um, my organization is part of a coalition that has a separate Civi CRM install on a WordPress site. Um, so when I was trying to figure out, okay, how much of what I'm doing is going to be cross-applicable, it's all of it, um, and how much am I going to have to relearn any sort of interfaces or things like that, um, it was really nice to be able to go into the WordPress site and be like, oh, this actually looks exactly the same. I feel really comfortable in this environment. That's awesome. I don't have to worry about this like I thought I did. Um, there um, are a couple of limitations to the demo site. Um, you can't send out mass emails, they have permissions limitations, um, and things with pa exploring payments in the Drupal don't really work so well, as I'm sure you can imagine why with it being a demo site. Um, it doesn't have everything fully set up and integrated. It's not an install for an organization to be, ewing, uh, to be used. Um, as you can also, um, I'm sure, tell, or at least guess at, there are going to probably be other people on the site, no matter when you go, um, who are also going to be using it. Uh, Civi CRM does have a global community, and um, that means even if you are exploring around with it at 2 a.m., um, it's likely that whether it's other people here in the U.S. playing with it at 2 a.m. or people halfway across the world playing with it at a much more reasonable hour, um, there will probably be other people in there creating data, creating groups, um, experimenting with things, testing out features and functionalities. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are making data there. Another thing to keep in mind is the fact that anyone can use it. Um, so when you do put data into Civi in order to play with it, make sure you're not using real information, um, unless it's your own information and you're okay with everybody having that. Um, but you, know, you don't want to import your own organization's contacts into there to start playing around, um, because that's huge privacy stuff. That's what the demo site looks like on Drupal, which is uh, ones that I've played around with some. So you can see people set up the dashboards. You can go in and look at the dashboards, play with reporting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about JIRA, which is how you can report issues that you have and bugs that exist in Civi CRM. Um, a couple of things. Um, oh, that's what the JIRA interface looks like. Um, so you can see that they have the project up there. There are a couple of different projects. If you're testing out Civi HR or a couple of other things, have their own select on the drop down. But most of the time, if you're going to be reporting a bug um, based on your presence here at the Civi CRM User Summit, I'm guessing you're going to be using Civi. Um, uh, it's really important to be detailed when you're going through your description um, and when you're inputting your summary and everything else. Um, and we'll go through the other various things um, and what's really important about it. But I wanted to give people an idea of what it looked like um, before we got going. Um, so when you are reporting a bug, there are a couple of things to do before you actually go in and say, oh, I found this error in my CIVI. Um, this isn't working. Um, OK, time to go report a bug. It, that's not. Take a step and pause. Um, first, go try it out in the demo. Um, see if your problem exists on your install of Civi or if it exists globally in Civi CRM. Um, and uh, so if you're still returning the same problem in the demo, then you can go back over to Jira and be like, OK, let me see if anybody else has noticed that this bug exists. Um, so you can go in and search for whatever bug was happening. Um, I know an example of this was um, state exports. Um, I know for a while, exporting um, when you're exporting addresses from Civi CRM, the states weren't coming with it. Um, and I think we actually, they, um, I found code for that in the forums. Um, but I'm sure what happened is people would go and they tried it in the demo site and tried exporting things from the demo site. It still wasn't working. So somebody was the first one to go and report it on JIRA. And then everybody else who noticed that bug would do a search on JIRA to see if it had already been reported and if there was a fix or an update. Um, if it's not already in the demo or already reported, that's when you create an issue. Make sure that you know which version of Civi you're using, um, and what, um, and that includes which CMS you're using it on. Those sorts of things are really, really important, um, along with what component of Civi the error is um, 
happening in are really important to figuring out who on the core team or outside of the core team is going to take on the issue in order to fi fix it and debug. Um, the labels component um, is kind of like tags. Um, it's not the most important thing to have there. Um, if you have some things, you know, this is states could be an, um, a label for the one issue that I was talking about. Um, there's a priority section. Um, it can be set to anything, but try and be realistic with your expectations. Most issues that you're going to come across in Civi CRM um, are going to be minor issues. Um, if it's something that is like, oh my goodness, the entire Civi CRM is breaking, that's when you use the urgent tag. Um, most of the time, your issue is not urgent, though it might be really important and really, really frustrating. Um, urgent is like, oh my goodness, please stop every coding bit that is happening at core and let's fix this right now because Civi CRM is broken and exploding and on fire. That's probably not what's happening, though it might feel like that. <laughs> um, as I mentioned earlier, the component is really important to figure out who the project will belong to. Um, and after the description, there's a whole bunch of other text happening there. Most of that you can pretty much ignore. Um, a lot of that is internal things for figuring out how they're going to fix it, who's going to fix it, things like that. Um, so that's not something that you really have to worry about as someone who is reporting a bug. But when you do report a bug, make sure that you understand that you have a responsibility to respond back to the developers, to check up on the issue, to see if they need anything from you to confirm what's happening. Um, make sure that you have some time set aside to check up on this issue, to work with the developers and get them what they might need in order to fix this issue and make everybody happier. Um, it's like anything else when you're trying to make a project better and you're working on improving it. And I'm sure that if you are taking the time to report an issue, report a bug, it's probably something that you care enough about to check up on and see when it's going to be fixed. Um, so checking up on it not only let you see, lets you see any sort of update, but also makes sure that the developers can get in contact with you if they have questions about how the bug came about, how you found out about it, what you were doing that was causing it to happen, um, which are things that should be in detailed in the report, um, but if for whatever reason some little bit was missing or you were like, oh, I don't think this part is important, but actually it is critically important for them to figure it out, they can get in contact and get that information. Any question on bugs? Oh, you'll get email updates as it gets assigned and stuff like that. <laughs> Great. Um, events, Civi CRM offline. Um, so as you are aware of, as you are here at a Civi CRM event, um, Civi CRM has events. Um, they have CiviCon every year. Um, there's one in the US and one in UK. Um, there might be other ones that I could not have been aware of or missed on my searching of the website. Um, but CiviCon is really, really fun. I've been to CiviCon the past two years, um, and it's been one of the coolest experiences for me as far as I want to get more involved with this community. I really like what they're doing. This is a um, tool that we have to use that we can make so much better. Here's an opportunity for me to see how other people are making it work. Um, how can I emulate that? How can I do other cool things? How can I get more involved? Um, there are meetups that might be happening locally. Um, I know that there are some. I think the closest one that I've had, my organization is based in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I don't think we've had a meetup in Columbus, um, though I know we do have several organizations in the area using it. Um, I know they have ones in Chicago. I know they have ones in DC. And these can be a really great opportunity for you to meet and interact with people who are using Civi CRM and maybe have other people to lean on to help bounce ideas off of, um, meet other people who are using it in the same way that you are. One of the coolest things for me about Civi C um, Con was meeting up with people who were fundraisers like me and talking to them about what they found most useful when they were trying to fundraise with Civi. What were things that they put into thought about when they were sending out emails for solicitations? How did they track donor interactions? What did they do about creating kind of donor portfolios for different people? And all of those ideas really helped, um, really solidified for me in kind of the direction that my organization went at. A lot of those first concepts came out of Civi CRM or CiviCon and talking to other people using the database that had been using it for longer and that had a better understanding of what it could do. Um, there are trainings like this one, um, which I have had a great time at so far this morning. Um, there are also trainings like um, the user and admin training. 
Um, and I went to that in 2013. And I can, if you're just now getting um, using Civi, if you're just starting out, if you're struggling with what Civi is able to do, I cannot recommend anything higher than I can recommend trying to make it and trying to find the budget and push back at your um, bosses and anybody else who has power over your ability to go to trainings at work um, to, go to, the, to go to a Civi user and admin training. It is so fantastically phenomenal. Um, to give you an idea of where my organization was with using Civi CRM, because we were about ready to give up on it and try and find something else because it wasn't working for us, we were tracking contact with donors as notes instead of as activities. Um, if you're familiar with how Civi works, notes aren't searchable, they're not standardized, there's no format to them, um, everything is just in a really big long text field, including the subject line, there's no information about who's making it unless you write it in there. So it was a giant headache to try and figure out what sort of contact we had had with people and everything else. And I went to the Civi user and admin training and all of a sudden it's like my whole eyes were open to everything that Civi was able to do. Um, I found out about events and how you can assign them and keep track of them, um, how it lets you really set up um, responsibility for different donors, for different people in the organization, how we could make our Civi mail better, all sorts of different techniques. Um, it's a really, really, really great training. Um, some of you may have been at it um, at this last week. So no, seriously, if you're just starting out or if your organization is just starting out or if your Civi CRM is a mess or anything else, really, really think about doing this. It's a really fantastic experience. Um, there's my favorite thing, which are the forums. I love the Civi CRM forums. Um, I find them incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, so it's a place you can go to get support from members of the community. Um, it's categorized by the different types of questions, whether it's dealing with Civi functions, which Civi function it is, if you're having install and setup issues, um, anything like that. Um, there's a place for requests for new features that Civi might need. Um, and like I said, it's run by the community, responded to by the community, including the core team as part of that community. Um, there are interest groups, or there, and there's also a community, sorry, there's also a community section of the forums, um, talking about interest groups, um, different ways you're using Civi CRM, success stories, trying to find hosts and other people to work with. Um, you can network with people who use Civi in the same way that you do at your jobs. You can look for jobs involving using Civi on the forums. Um, that's what they look like. Um, and um, I had a really cool experience with meeting somebody who had answered my question um, on the forums in person last year at CiviCon. Um, I was doing a lightning talk about some of the improvements that we'd made to our um, Civi CRM install. And um, I was like, and we, did, I, we wanted to figure out how to keep this box checked. So I asked a question on the forums and someone answered. And someone who was sitting in like the fourth row raised, my hand, raised their hand and was like, that was me. Um, and that was just a really cool experience that you're not going to find with software that isn't open source like Civi, where you're not getting these sorts of contributions from the community and the sort of interaction from the community. Um, so I thought that was really, really cool. Um, um, now that I've covered, um, does anyone have any questions about any of those functions, any of those resources that are available, um, anything like that? Um, I just have a couple of other little things to go over. Um, yeah. I have not. Um, I know that they do videos um, to help go through some of the, um, I think they do, unless I'm thinking of someone else, um, to do some of the uh, functionality and some of the trainings and things like that. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, you may have heard phrases um, as far as improvements, things like what version of Civi CRM are you using and things like that. And people are just asking how current is your install, when was the last time you updated, um, things like that. And those sorts of improvements happy ha um, because Civi gets upgrades. Um, those improvements happen in a couple of different ways. Um, Companies, like you saw Dave talking about earlier, um, decide that they want a feature and really like a feature or that there isn't the sort of in-depth um, coverage of that feature that they might want um, so they can fund and ask the core team to make it happen. There are also make it happens, um, which are more community-driven fundraising improvements. 
Um, so um, if you have an idea that you want to see make happen and you know your organization can fund maybe some of it but not all of it and you've talked to a couple of other organizations and you know that this is something that's interested that other people are interested it's kind of like a crowdfunding for a single improvement feature um, so people can contribute to that particular particular functionality um, and make it work um, WordPress access control not needing to be a WordPress admin to cover some of that was one feature that um, I know that I think the improvements to soft credit at least originally were under a make it happen. I don't. They still are. They still are. Yeah. Um, so things like that happen because community members want to see them happen, and they talk to other community members and band together to make functionality work. Um, and lastly, I just want to talk about a couple of different ways that you can get involved and get your organization involved in working more closely with CVCRM and contributing back to the community. Um, obviously, like I just talked about, there are Make It Happens. If you have a feature that you're looking at, um, you can propose one and talk to other people about it, write a blog post, and um, really see if you can rally the community behind supporting the thing that you're really interested in seeing happen for CVCRM. Um, you can like I said, also just contribute to features that you see that you like. Um, there are the sprints that are talked about that are oftentimes when I've heard them talked about, they're just code sprints, but they also do a lot of documentation at those sprints. Um, so even if you're not a developer and you can't contribute back code, if you have documentation that you can contribute back to the community, um, getting involved with a sprint in that way is one way that you can be more involved. Um, give back your knowledge. You um, so they run them. Um, it's something that CiviCRM runs a lot of time after, times after an event. I know they do one after CiviCon. I know there's one happening tomorrow after this event. Um, and it's a whole bunch of people locked in a room, um, all working on coding and getting stuff done. Um, or not just stuff done, getting, make, getting the co making the coding happen all together, working towards something. So all those bugs that you're calling have to get fixed. <laughs> <laughs> the code part of the code sprint is an inaccurate description. <laughs> um, you can also go back to your organization and whoever is the decider of what sort of coalitions and bits and pieces you get to contribute and be a part of and become a member of CiviCRM. Uh, that's going to be my big project when I go back um, to the Secular Student Alliance is to really push my organization to become a member because the functionality that I think we've gained out of Civi is worth an investment. Um, it's been, like I said, I am more than happy to talk to you about some of the ways we use it for fundraising and everything else um, anytime today after the presentation, after my presentation and things like that. Um, I'm a big fan of that. It lets you support the awesomeness that is the VCRM. Um, you can also do something that I've actually really enjoyed. I've been contacted by a couple of different people in this capaci capacity. You can sign up as a CiviCRM ambassador, um, which basically lists you on um, CiviCRM.org as somebody that people can contact to talk about different aspects of CiviCRM. It lets you share um, your experience with people who are considering it. Um, I actually got contacted by a student in a nonprofit class who was um, setting up um, for I think part of his class was working with a nonprofit to do a like CRM functionality analysis and see if it would be a good fit for them. Um, and he was clearly doing his homework and found the Civi CRM ambassadors and was talking to people. So I spent you know 20 or 30 minutes one day talking to a student who was interested in looking at how Civi CRM worked for a class. Um, that was one of the really cool things that I've done. Um, so I really like that. Um, you can post on the forums and reply on the forums. Um, I thought of something this morning that may have been the ambassador that I put in, so yeah. Um, unless anybody has any further questions, um, that's what I have for you, so thank you. And also an extra big thanks to Jane who helped me a lot with this presentation, especially stuff like JIRA and, and what I was supposed to do with um, the IRC and things like that, that I have no idea what to do, so um, it's another example of how fantastic the CIVI CRM community is.